Hi everyone, my name is Lena Tkachova. Today I would like to answer a question. And the question is, how to grow the second leg? But what is the second leg? We're constantly saying that delivery is our first powerful leg, the pillar of our business, and that truly is so. Restaurant has always been the second leg, but now it's the time to change, and let me tell you how. The first thing that we needed to do is to tell our guests that actually we do have restaurants. Surprisingly, but not so many people know that we have beautiful, comfortable restaurants. And in the first national advertising campaign that we launched on April 29th, we rapped about the fact that Dodo is, that Dodo is good vibes, a place for friends, it's a gallery but not a museum, and any small pizza is 199. So the ambitious goal of the campaign was to have 1.5 million revenue per restaurant. That was pretty ambitious, but we have earned on average 1.8 dine-in sales per one unit in Russia. And that's only, only the gallery. Yes, it is possible to earn more compared to QSR, but for us it was growth from March to April of over 31%. And spoiler alert, we have been able to maintain that growth in the following month. So we had two targets, 1.5 average inline sales per unit restaurant, and we have reached that in May. And we had another goal, share of orders from the app of 30%. We have not achieved that yet, because probably it has been overly ambitious. Because it's hardly to change the client's behavior pattern, when the client is just used to going to the cashier and making the order there. So we have lowered our target, it's still ambitious, but reachable. So we have corrected the target. But what happened to this figure in the end of May and June? We were in the plateau. About 16% of orders made from the app, and we were growing by decimal points. Probably some of our team members are related to shoemakers, because we decided to change our shoes and launch not one ad campaign, but two. I mean, two is better than one. Why not? Turns out, when we were shooting the restaurant ad, we also shot the promo to promote the app on the digital. And looks like here you have it, just go and launch it on TV. But turns out it's not that easy, as usually. There were large prices of Moscow in the shot, we needed to deal with legal about that. There were combos that were not for sale anymore, we needed to fix that in legal as well. We needed to change that. There were iteration after iteration to actually confirm the video with the national ad agency. We want to thank our legal team, particularly Madira Sadirova, for making this happen. So, what's next? Another major character, coronavirus. That's the major character in the shot. In July, Moscow administration introduced limitations to admission to restaurants for non-vaccinated people. So we had to change. We had to change our ad. So it was not about go to a restaurant and hang out there because it's cool. Instead, it was here's the safe way to go to the restaurant and make the order. Win-win. So we began hitting through the plateau. And last week, the share of orders from the app was up to 22%. Of course, Moscow restaurants made an impact. But if we clear out them from the data, turns out it's still over 20% which is also very significant, but also we have super restaurants that have actually broken through the 30% target. And there are insane restaurants like in Magadan and Gupkinski with over 40% orders in the restaurant made via the app. Imagine, almost a half. This is just awesome. Another important target, important figure, is that our monthly up installs have increased by 50% both for organic and non-organic traffic in April compared to March. And in June we have also grown in terms of app installs. That is also great. Why? Because the app not only fosters orders in the restaurant, but also delivery, because you can make an order there as well, in the app too. But of course, the restaurants are powerful not only with national campaigns. We're actually improving three major branches – trade marketing, operations and our services. In trade marketing, we're promoting the app like it's the last thing we do. But we're not doing that in a chaotic way. We have dedicated QR code for every sort of promo material, so we evaluate the efficiency of every single one of them, trying to reject the least efficient and promote the most efficient. You would imagine that TV board 
at the entrance to the restaurant or a sticker on the floor would have the greatest conversion for app installs. But no, turns out the receipt, the check, is the promo item that has the best conversion for app installs. As for operations, we improved it as well. Now Olinka speaks in a new way and sometimes even louder. Orders are highlighted. And we have launched RN Digital for dine and orders. Olinka is our voice assistant, by the way. We've also updated our R and Digital with the opportunity to track every order. Now the restaurant administrator can figure out why certain orders were delivered very quickly and others were not. So we can systematically improve the quality of products right in the restaurant. And of course, client service. How can we do without it? On Thursday, Bore told you about all of the changes that we've made in the Q3. Let me highlight just a few of them the most significant ones. The first one being the launch in Kazakhstan and Belarus. We launched on June 1st, prepared the materials, tested everything in a test environment, synced with our partners and launched it. On the graph here you see the three countries moving head to head from one week to the other. In terms of orders made through the app, share of orders, looks like Russia is ahead in week four. That's mainly related to the launch of the national ad campaign, while in Belarus and Kazakhstan we see very gradual increase, because the guys have not been investing a lot in the promo of the app. You guys, you really should. So start doing that. Next, the change that we've made in terms of geo. That's the hygiene for the order, both for delivery and for the restaurant, and our Geo and Ninja++ teams have radically improved this one. What matters is 80% that we have now made through the app have been made when the person is in the restaurant. The trade marketing that we are doing, like it's the last thing we do, truly works. Another important point, the launch of this section, you will like it. That truly is an MVP that we have launched very quickly. But now 18% of the orders are made with the products in this You Will Like It section. Another important feature, we have added new categories, coffee and cocktails. Can you remember the last time we were adding new categories to the menu? Probably it was a combo. Now we have tested this one and we see that we have 5% more sales of coffee only in the app. How cool is that? And we have rectified the pickup time. We had only one button there, make it quick. But define quick. Quick is different for everything and everybody. Five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen or twenty-five or an hour. We have added the time that is relevant for a particular product in the order. For example, if a person orders a coffee, then make it quick would be up to five, up to five minutes. If it's a set of products that need to be cooked in the kitchen, that's up to fifteen minutes. And for example, if the order is for a big number of pizzas, that may be even up to twenty-five minutes. This is what we're doing now. But what's in the future? We want to make the best app for the order, both in the restaurant and for the delivery. And here's the pool of hypotheses that we want to test right now. First of all, table service. Tips not only for delivery guys, but also for cashiers. Redesign menu. More fluid and quick app so that the clients understand truly that it's much faster to make an order in the app. We want to add more hot and ready products and more pieces and slices. Also, we want to improve communication about conscious consumption in uh, the flow of the order of the app. Of course, there are some limitations that are still maintained. Of course, sales in the restaurants in Moscow fell by 50%, and that hurts. But we were not hindered in the first wave of COVID when there was a full lockdown and everything was closed. We still improved our app and we're preparing the national campaign about the restaurants. And we're not going to stop this time either. We're going to improve our app and next year we're going to launch two ad campaigns about the restaurants. And since you know how much we love to change our shoes, let's make it four. Many thanks and let us now see the video about the meetup of the restaurant managers. Guys, it's July 7, 2021 and we are reporting hot from the center of Moscow on the first meetup of the restaurant administrators. Let us interview the guys. Where are you? In Moscow. When? In summer. What are you? Most efficient, bright, brilliant. What do you do to be here? Make the best pizza, set the standard and be really good at dancing. The most important thing, you have to be super Let's keep up the work, you guys. 
our strategy, as far as people go, is based on the need to hire and foster the best administrators. This is the focus, the core of our strategy, because as I've said, the administrators set the result in the restaurant. We actually picked the guys based on their rating. We have calculated the compound rating for six months and the best 70 people are here. Here we have guys from all of the Eurasia. We have a few people from Kazakhstan, there are people from Belarus and from all over Russia. My name is Igor. I am from the glorious city of St. Petersburg. My name is Kristina. I am from Minsk. I am Pavel. I am from the region of Rostov, from the city of Kamensk, Shaktinsk. Okay, we must be client-oriented first and foremost. In the first day, we have a very packed agenda. We'll be talking with Vanya, Fyodor and Aziz about being client-oriented. Then the guys will have a quest specifically tailored for them. My team is moving in the quest. Dodo Pizza, that is me. Dodo Pizza, that is we. After the quest, the guys will be pitching their solutions to the owners. And in the evening, we'll be talking to leaders from the managing company. There will be team talks and the guys will answer all of the burning questions. And I'm sure that the questions will be burning. With a team with the guys, we're constantly striving to show better results. Just because um, all of the guys are super motivated. I don't know why, but they want to be the best. They just want to. I found out about this meetup and I told the guys, we have two months to get there. We should get there. They told me, yes, okay, do it. We want to make you go there. And they were delivering even more. That was such a charm. I actually closed my shift yesterday, went home, took a shower loaded the report, <laughs> uploaded the report on the rating of standards. You still have the time till tomorrow, till six o'clock. So, and here it goes. I need to go and catch the plane, take a car, and I'm here, full of energy. Why not? The quest in Moscow with a thousand of tasks, when you need to check everything within an hour. I mean, it was such a marathon, and with so much adrenaline, we were jumping from task to task, doing this and that, getting out of the subway, into the subway, or not. There was so much drive, and it's just the beginning. I don't even imagine what's going to happen next. It's such a pleasure. Super awesome. I mean, I can meet the guys. That's the best. All day today, we have been hosting different sorts of competitions, making songs, dancing all around the city. And there are many things ahead of us. Of course, the tour to the head office of Dodo and in the last day, probably the partners meetup that we truly look forward to. We'll learn something new this time and get the feedback from the guys. And the next administrators meetup will be even better. We want to host the large scale administrators meetup. This year, we've only been able to invite 70 people, but we want to have like 300, as many as possible, so that everyone could talk and learn from one another and let return back home with some new knowledge. Morning, everyone. My name is Sasha Sidalatchik. I'm the HR director for customer support. And let me tell you about our HR strategy. But first, let me tell you about our call center. Every day we process over 15,000 client applications from Russia and Kazakhstan. We respond on the hotline, in social networks, via email, via mobile app. Our team is about 250 people working at home remotely from over 130 cities. By the way, we are the first in Russia fully distributed remote call center. And for many years, we are in the top four best call centers in CIS in terms of employee satisfaction. That is according to Apex Back survey. And we have actually got this um, Crystal Headset Award as the best place for work. Why our employees love their work? Here's what the survey shows. First of all, the team is good, the atmosphere is pleasant, and of course it is possible to work flexibly and remotely. The team is proud to provide the high quality service to our clients. And there is high level of trust, which is another nice reason to work for our company. 
they trust the team, they trust the company, they trust the administration. But as a matter of fact, it's not as great as it seems. In March this year, we noticed that the staff turnover is very, very high. Now it's twice as high as the norm. Every month we have about 30 people leaving the team. And of course we may be as awesome as ever, we can win awards. And truly we have great results in our internal surveys. But if people are leaving, that means that we're doing something wrong. And in order to figure this out, we actually needed to set the HR strategy, which helped. As a matter of fact, our culture is very much dependent on the level of development of the business. The attitude to people changes, the requirements are changing. First of all, for the first five years, we've been a typical call center, with scripts, for example. Peter, sorry for the inconvenience. Unfortunately, at the moment, we do not have the technical opportunity to help you. Let us make the request and within 24 hours, the store manager will get in touch with you. And for every word of the client, we had the script. We had the script for every single word. We were listening to the calls of the operators, evaluating according to the control list of observation. So we were checking whether the person is actually following the script with the correct tone. And the salary was tied to control list of observation. Uh, but we had relatively soft family atmosphere, the Dodo family, as we called it. I mean, almost everywhere, from the top manager to the operator, was communicating pretty tightly. I mean, the staff was pretty limited. And between the calls, we were hosting competitions, we had these themed days. I mean, we were giving soft feedback. We were anxious to offend people or wound them. And uh, we had this atmosphere, the family atmosphere. We were very forgiving and the most important thing for us has always been the people. But, of course, the company gradually changed. First, we rejected the scripts. We gave certain freedom to people. We cancelled the connection between KPIs and the salary. We became more client-oriented. Client mattered more than the processes. We gave the opportunity to our operators to solve the problems directly right away and decide how they can particularly help this client. But the main principle was, of course, caring for the client. In the meantime, we were expecting that our operators will independently become more responsible, more proficient. When we came to the scoring model of salary, when we began to actually give promo codes, solving clients' problems directly without transitioning them to the store manager, the requirements became even more high and now we're hiring the best people only. And we have this triple A community, indeed. As a matter of fact, we don't want to become one of those large corporations for whom people are just a mere resource. We want to retain this balance between the scale and high level of service. But still we want to retain this concept that people matter the most. For that, we came up with this strategy. We hosted a number of surveys and we have been able to highlight the reasons for this high turnover. First of all, the salary level and the lack of bonuses. We do have to accept that we snoozed the moment when the average market salary was increased. Now we are about 6% behind the average. Second point, some sort of mishaps that always is very poorly reflect on people. There are always some bugs in the systems, dashboards are not working eventually, limitations with Dodo IS. For a long time we could not actually implement combo sets in the order section, so the guys had to manually do that for every single combo, every single promo, every single code that they needed to know, and that took a ton of time. 
and of course it was very stressful. The third point, a really hard workload. And here we were truly the hamster wheel, because the higher the load is, the more people leave, and the more people leave, the higher is the workload. Lack of communication was also a problem, lack of personal support was also a problem. And here's what I was telling you about. I mean, we had more people, the requirements became higher, and uh, unfortunately it's harder now to dedicate as much attention as before to people. Because just the team is much bigger. And sometimes the work is just not that exciting and not that diverse, especially in the front line. And not to mention a lot of stress after talking to complex clients. So our mission, the HR mission for us, is to create a truly well-knit, friendly team that wants to support clients with everybody enjoying the job. Imagine, we spend 30% of our life at work. And I don't want people to choose between earning well but tolerating the job that is not exciting and the job that they don't love. Or work in favor of a high idea, but with limited earnings. We don't want people to choose between these two extremes. We can perhaps regulate the workload, hire more people, increase salary, but we need to maintain the equilibrium, the balance with our clients and with our partners. What do I mean? For example, if we go and increase salary a lot right away, we will, of course, have to increase our tariffs and fees for our partners. Or if we keep the fees and pay a lot, but cut the number of people, of course, that will reflect on the clients. It will be harder to reach the call center and, of course, the quality of the service will go down. So, how are we going to get out of this situation? What have we done? We have actually developed the salary project, we have graded the salary, and now we have confirmed the first changes to the, to the rewards. In order to decrease the workload, we have actually introduced the outsource approach so that the operators would not overwork and, of course, the waiting time for the call would not be that long. Point three, we have taught our managers to support the operators. Now, every operator can just make a call and let off some steam, talk to the manager, and the manager will help to turn that steam into some more constructive engine. We're constantly, openly telling our operators about the situation, about the availability, about the problems and solutions, and about what we are planning to do. So the operators can give their feedback, we're answering their questions, we're maintaining communication. We have actually increased guides on self-management, telling people how to enjoy, enjoy their work, how to grow with pleasure in the company, about the available opportunities and our expectations. Also, another exciting part, we have discovered a dedicated team of editors amongst operators, and they every month release the corporate magazine, telling about the news of support line. We're also doing there some prize giveaways, competitions, contests with prizes, etc. What are we going to do in Q3? We want to improve our we want to improve our salary project so that people not only have high salary, but also know what are the criteria for the raise, how often can the raise happen, why operators earn this much or that much, and what can they do to earn more. Next step. We want to actually break our team into many groups, because at the moment, for example, we have over 150 operators. But there is no leader. There is the team of coaches, the team of administrators, the team of quality control managers. But there is no one particular leader, the person whom you could approach to solve the problem quickly. And we want to hire team leads, train them, or find those people internally, 
and actually make this teamwork more customized so that we would be able to regularly give feedback to operators and not only when something goes wrong. We want to work with individual targets, we want to support our team and we truly believe that this step could actually decrease the turnover. And another large-scale project is the Ambassadors of Customer Support. This sort of project was implemented very successfully in our restaurants. We want to do something like that in our support lines, make a team of engaged people who will be supporting the rest. We have the people who want to actually host uh, online corporate events, celebrations, host like secret Santas, do book crossing or send cards via mail to one another. There is a number of ideas coming from the guys themselves and we want to give them the opportunity to put that into reality. Another thing that I want to conclude with is that without the strategy we would not be able, we would be just doing patchwork. But it's important to look at the situation in the long term to see the actual goals that we have and actually think about the short-term set of solutions that would work in a long term. Hope you enjoyed the presentation. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to write me. Bye-bye.